Alright, so in this video, I'll be talking about different types of soundproofing and also sound deadening materials that do they actually work or do they just make you waste a whole lot of money and it just doesn't really do it for you. It just doesn't really work as well as they advertise. So let's just dive right in with green glue noise proofing compound. Now this shouldn't be mistaken with green glue noise proofing sealant. Those are two different things. The sealant is to seal air gaps around let's say a window, a door. But green glue noise proofing compound is something that you add between two layers of drywall to make that wall more soundproof. Now this is just a compound that you buy and it's said that it is supposed to turn this, well, let's just read what they say on their website so it's accurate. Now on their website, they say green glue noise proofing compound has a unique polymeric formula that converts the mechanical energy from sound waves into small amounts of heat. This process is a form of sound dampening. When the compound is sandwiched between two rigid layers of material like a drywall, it forms a dampening system. So when sound waves pass through the structure, the energy is dissipated in the form of heat. Now, is that true? Are they lying? Well, they're not lying. That is actually the truth. But what they're not saying is that physics will tell you that if you generate sound waves into mass, those sound waves will either go into that mass, be absorbed, or will be deflected. Even the sound waves that are deflected, they're not completely deflected. Some sound waves will go into the wall. What happens when sound waves goes into a wall? It creates heat. That's what happens. So yes, the green glue noise proofing compound does turn energy into heat. So let's just say that there are materials out there that does a similar job that costs a fraction of the price than green glue. Now green glue has gone up in price several times and right now I believe one bottle is between 20 and 30 dollars a bottle of green glue. Now they recommend two bottles of green glue per sheet of drywall. Now you're going to be spending between 40 and 60 dollars extra per sheet of drywall for this soundproofing material. Now that's a huge expense, but the thing is by spending all of that money, you would think that this is a miracle substance that will just stop sound dead in its tracks. And that's just not what's going to happen. What will stop sound dead in its tracks is mass, mass, mass. The more mass you have inside that wall is what is going to slow down those sound waves. So without adding mass, this invisible, or I guess this green shield that you're putting inside your wall is just not going to give you the results that you want by spending that much money for it. Now, what I would recommend instead of using a product like Green Glue and for you to save a whole lot of money, now this product will also turn sound waves into heat and will also dissipate inside the wall. And this is carpet glue. Now, there's different types of carpet glues. There's carpet glues that are more liquidy and there's some that are more tacky. Now, I'll have links in the description below of everything I talk about in this video and the carpet glue that you should use per some sound tests that I've made in the past is the more tacky one. So it just doesn't cost that much money to add this as a more soundproofing finishing touch because really this is all like layers of soundproofing that you add inside your wall to make your wall more soundproof. But by spending so much money on green glue, it basically stops you from spending money on material that actually works at blocking sound. Now this is glue. You still have to uh, screw in your drywall. Now, as I said, green glue noise proofing compound is what I'm talking about. Green glue noise proofing sealant or any other type of noise proofing sealant is something that I would actually spend money on because this is like caulking, but it's not your regular type of caulking. Now, does this actually live up to the hype? Yes, it does. Because acoustical caulking works a little bit differently than just your regular caulking. It's a little bit more expensive, yes, but regular caulking will dry up and crack over time. As you know, you can a house will shift and around windows, around doors, you'll see that the caulking cracks. 
Now, noise proofing sealant, noise proofing caulking will not crack. A lot of them recommend you just reapply every five years, but really after five years, I still get to see places crack where I've added some noise proofing sealant. Now you might ask, why does it really matter if I want to seal just a small hairline crack around a door and a wall? But what most people don't understand is just a small crack can let back in up to 50% of the noise back into the room. Now that seems a little bit excessive, I understand that, but just, just go anywhere and open the window just a bit. It works a lot better if you have a double or triple pane window, a thicker window that stops a lot more noise than just a very thin window. So just open your double or triple pane window by just a very small crack and you'll notice that you can now hear everything almost that's going on outside. So yes, just sealing small gaps around door frames, around window frames, it actually helps in soundproofing, but it is also a finishing touch, but a finishing touch that actually works really well and actually does live up to the hype. Let's move on to another material that does it live up to the hype. Well, let's go into acoustics. Acoustic foam. Does it live up to the hype? Well, it, it can, but does acoustic panels work better? Yes, it does. But acoustic foam is a lot cheaper than acoustic panels. This one I built myself and video right up there to show you how to build your very own acoustic panels. Now acoustic panels and acoustic foams, this is not a soundproofing material. So when you go around and you're looking for soundproofing and the person behind the camera or I guess in front of the camera tells you that you know, this will stop sound or block sound, it's not true, it will not do anything. So if you're looking to soundproof a wall, then this and this will not help you whatsoever. The only thing that this will help with is to make the room that you are in sound better. But these are acoustics and they're not soundproofing material. They're an acoustic material. And you might be wondering why am I even talking about this in a soundproofing video? Well, the reason why is because a lot of people talk about it in soundproofing video. And I just want you to know that if they start talking about it, just click and come watch my videos because they don't, they're not a soundproofing material. All right, so now let's go back into soundproofing. If you're soundproofing a wall, usually what I say is add mass because mass will stop sound. Now, the easiest thing to do is just to add an extra layer of drywall because then you don't have to start ripping out drywall and adding stuff in it like acoustical insulation. But there are a lot of different types of soundproofing drywalls out there and do they live up to the hype? Does it make any sense to go out and buy a soundproofing drywall that will cost you probably about double what a sheet of half inch drywall would do? But the alternative is 5 8 inch drywall. Now this type of drywall is thicker than your half inch drywall and so it will stop more sound, but it is also a lot cheaper than your dedicated soundproofing drywall. Now what makes a soundproofing drywall different than a regular drywall is that most are made with two layers of sheetrock, thinner sheetrocks, and then in the middle is a compound that is sandwiched in between, something like green glue. So instead of going with a dedicated soundproofing drywall, just go with a 5 8 inch drywall. You'll save a lot of money compared to a more dedicated soundproofing drywall. There is something that does live up to the hype and that does really work very well at blocking low frequency and also high frequency noise, and that's mass loaded vinyl, also known as MLV. Now, mass load vinyl, I bring it up in a lot of videos because it does live up to the hype. But what exactly is mass loaded vinyl? Well, mass loaded vinyl, the technical term is that it is a heavy limp vinyl sheeting material that usually has been impregnated with metal particles to increase its mass. Mass loaded vinyl is used for adding mass to walls and ceiling as part of a soundproofing or sound control scheme. Does it live up to the hype? Yes, it does. Mass loaded vinyl. The thing is also about this material is that it comes in rolls and the bigger the roll you buy, the cheaper it is. So if you go on Amazon, I'll have links. If you go on Amazon, you'll notice that there's different sizes. Now what I would do, I would go with the two pound mass loaded vinyl. You can, you can buy one pound or two pound. 
just buy the two pounds. It's just a tad thicker and you'll be adding this material in between your existing layer of drywall and your new layer of drywall, your 5 8 inch drywall. Now the bigger the roll, the cheaper it is. But remember, the bigger the roll, the heavier it is. One roll can weigh hundreds and hundreds of pounds. So if you want to save a little bit of money and you order a roll and it comes in and you open it up and it's 300 pounds, it's going to be a little bit more difficult to work with. But there are ways to make your mass loaded vinyl installation a lot easier and a video right there will explain it to you. But just have a friend, have somebody help you. Install this on the wall. Now this mass loaded vinyl, you don't glue it on the wall. You actually staple it with industrial staples or a nail gun. Now some people might wonder, can I just add the mass loaded vinyl over top my existing wall and not add another layer of drywall over top of it? You can do that, but it's just not going to work that well. The thing is, is as I talked about acoustical sealant, you can't leave any gaps or cracks if you're, will, if you're looking to soundproof the entire wall. So just be careful. You can't just, uh, you can't just hang the mass loaded vinyl and expect it to block a lot of the noise. It actually has to be stuck on the wall, it has to be the entirety of the wall. But does it live up to the hype? Yes, it does. This is a material that does stop sound, does block sound, does also absorb sounds. Now another soundproofing material that you might have heard out there, sound deadening paint. Now, sound deadening paint is a lot more expensive than regular paint. Sound deadening paint is just a very thick paint. They recommend you adding three layers of paint on to your wall and that it will make a very big difference in soundproofing the wall. Does this live up to the hype? The answer is no. Once you've added your second layer of drywall, just paint your wall or add some acoustic foam if you want to sound deaden the room. Don't go and buy gallons after gallons of acoustic paint because with that money you could actually go and buy some acoustic panel. But that's what a lot of people do. They use it as a finishing touch but even as a finishing touch, testing this product in the past has basically proven to me that it just doesn't work. Alright, so enough with that. Now let's go with insulation. What you would put inside your wall if you wanted to soundproof the wall. If you're lucky that you can just rip out the drywall or you don't have any drywall there installed already, then you can add some acoustical insulation. Something like rock wool safe and sound. But the question is, is do these types of material work better than just your regular fiberglass pink insulation? The answer to that is yes these types of material actually do live up to the hype and they're not that much more expensive than the pink insulation. Now most interior wall will not have insulation inside the wall. Most, in, most walls that will contain insulation is your exterior walls because of heat and cold. This type of insulation is really good for heat and cold but is also good at absorbing noise. Now it's all in the way that this type of acoustical material that you'd put inside your wall is built. Video right there, I go through why and how this type of insulation actually works. Does that live up to the hype? As I said, yes. It's a little bit more expensive but go ahead and if you do have open cavities into your wall, a wall that you want to soundproof, go ahead and buy some acoustical insulation. All right, so, so the next soundproofing material is a resilient channel. Now, are those worth the hype? Well, that is something that you can also, just like the insulation, you can only add if your wall is open. You can't add your resilient channel over top of the drywall. Now, the whole point of resilient channel is to decouple the wall from the studs. Any vibration that comes and hits that wall will basically dissipate in the wall and go into the resilient channel and then dissipate throughout the resilient channel, not going into the studs, vibrating into the wall and going into the next room. This actually works. Decoupling a wall, making that air gap works better at drowning out low frequency noise. If you want to get rid of bass, if you want to get rid of vibrational noise that drives you crazy, the really the only way to do it correctly that will work to your satisfaction is by adding a resilient channel. Does it live up to the hype? It does.
So go ahead and install Resilient Channel. Now I'll have links in description below where I go more into details of how to install Resilient Channel because the thing with Resilient Channel, if you don't install it correctly, then it will not work. So either hire somebody to install the Resilient Channel, somebody that has installed it before, because if you go ahead and install this yourself and do it incorrectly, it will make your life a living hell. If you enjoy this video, if I, if I missed some things that you might have questions on, please let me know in the comment section below. I will do my very best to answer every question. And even if it doesn't have to anything to do with this video, just ask a question on the newest video and the chances I'll actually answer are a lot better. Again, thank you very much. Appreciate it.